Interior, Ellie's car. She drives through the low-rent district in South Santa Monica, bordering Venice. Homeless encampments, dive restaurants, laundromats, etc. She pulls into a parking garage of a modest, low-rise apartment complex. Interior, Santa Monica apartment, day. Ellie enters, arms loaded with grocery bags. The place is a little run down, with cottage cheese ceilings and worn brown cabinets, but it's clean and homey. Hi, guys. We find Mac Freeman, 30s, a charismatic showboat whose innate likability masks his narcissism, watching football on the couch. He still gets by on his good looks, with tousled beachy hair beginning to recede. A bit of a beer belly protrudes from his too-tight vintage t-shirt, untucked from his cargo shorts. Sitting next to him is Dylan, ten, holding a guitar and in his own world, writing music. Hey, babe. Hi, Mom. She puts the bags down and brings a cold beer for Mac. You're the best. You know I'd do anything for you. She gives him a kiss. Dylan holds his hand out for a beer. Where's mine? She tosses him a kind bar, and actually gets a smile back. Quick cuts of Ellie making lasagna with bottled sauce and a green can of parmesan, cleaning, doing laundry. Then she sits next to a stack of bills and ticks things off her to-do list. Thank God you sold a painting. We almost have enough for rent. I'm the man. She smiles as he beats his chest, and then taps Dylan's chest. Dylan strums his guitar in response, singing, The man, he's the mother- She flashes him the cocked head mother glare. Lovin' man. She walks over and snuggles in next to Mac. I'm gonna go meet Ophelia at Taylor's. You sure you guys don't want to come for dinner? Hey, I have a major plan to sink into this couch and not move for several hours. Go hang with the girls. I'll take the truck because the door on my car is stuck. After you have some sloth time, can you check it out? Yeah, sure. And maybe help Dylan with his science experiment? I'm working on a song. Okay, but I bought you the stuff. Don't interrupt an artist's flow. And I made you the rice. Respect the process. He's writing a song. What he needs to write is a report for science class. Mom, that assignment is so lame. Or you could say... It's going to be amazing! That's why the experiment is called the power of words. It shows you the effect your words have on living things. Dylan keeps strumming. She heads back to the kitchen, pulling out glass containers, cooked rice, note cards, tape, and pens. Let me help you. It's simple. You just put the rice into three separate containers. She spoons the rice into the containers. Then, every day for a month, you talk to the rice to show the effect of words on a cellular level. She covers the container, then tapes on the note card. This one is love. She holds up the container and talks to it. I love you. You're the best thing that ever happened to me. You can do anything. You're so talented. Okay? Come, help me. He slowly gets up while Ellie tapes the next card. So, for the hate container, every day say horrible, mean things to it. Dylan grabs the container and rifles off monotone insults. You worthless loser. You suck. You ballless sack of runny diarrhea. Ellie stares at him. Where did that come from? You have more wrinkles than my freaking asshole. Dylan, language! But good. She applies the last ignore note card and hands him all three. Now, the last one you completely ignore. Don't talk to it at all. Okay. Now put these in the fridge, and you're done. Good job, you did it. She literally did everything. He goes to the fridge while Ellie ticks it off her list and grabs her stuff to leave. And tomorrow we have Dad's birthday dinner. I told you, I don't want to do anything for this birthday. Mac, it's going to be fun. We're just having tacos as a family. You're like old now. Well, he's the youngest dad of all your friends, so... Guys, I said no birthday talk. Ellie gives Dylan the zip-it sign and waves as she leaves. Lasagna's in the oven. Love you! 